When European colonists arrived in Illinois, they found massive burial mounds, mounds that would lead to the discovery of one of the largest ancient indigenous cities in America. As the oldest standing cemetery in New Orleans, St. Louis Cemetery No. 1 is visually striking thanks to its closely packed above ground tombs. The cemetery was established in 1789 due to worries that earlier now defunct cemeteries couldn't hold all the dead after a series of fires and an epidemic ravaged the city. Initially, burials were likely in the ground, but an 1803 ruling ordered that all new burials be above ground structures. Otherwise, floods in the low lying city could result in gruesome and unsanitary exhumations. One of the most famous inhabitants is Marie Laveau, who was born in New Orleans around 1801. As a mixed-race daughter of a Creole mother and white father, she ostensibly worked as a hairstylist, but was actually renowned for her work as a voodoo priestess. Even after her death in 1881, many believed that she still carried great power and would write X's on her tomb to curry favor with Laveau's spirit. That practice, which has nothing to do with voodoo, is now strongly discouraged and can earn a stubborn graffiti artist a serious fine. Tourists still try to get some good luck from Laveau by leaving three X's. You can Google three X's, the significance of three X's in the voodoo world. There is none. The North Burial Ground of Providence, Rhode Island has been around since 1700, when town officials set aside about 45 acres of land in North Providence for interments. The first burial of Samuel Whipple took place in 1711 and probably involved just a simple shroud for one of the most prominent citizens of the settlement. The establishment of a burial ground was a necessary step away from the old practice of family graveyards scattered around the countryside, which took up valuable real estate in a growing, bustling settlement. The drive to make burial all the more efficient even pushed Providence residents to exhume many of their relatives in 1785 and reinter them in their North Burial Ground. Since then, it's undergone a myriad of changes, including more grave relocations, deterioration due to inconsistent budgeting, and a prominent monument that went missing after the city took it down following a car accident in the 1980s. Most surprising of all for such an old cemetery is the fact that it's still accepting new burials, with an estimated 200 per year. In the middle of crowded, busy Boston is one place that's full of stillness, at least as far as its permanent residents are concerned, the Granary Burying Ground. Though the cemetery gained its name in 1737 after a grain storage building was moved nearby, burials at the site actually began much earlier, starting in 1660. The last burial there took place in 1880, and over the 220 years it was active, about 5,000 people were interred in the Granary Burying Ground. However, time has not been kind to all of the memorials, as only an estimated 2,345 markers remain today. Missing gravestones aren't the only thing that has complicated the history of the cemetery. 19th century Bostonians were unhappy with the awkward hodgepodge of the burials, so they set about rearranging the headstones in neat, visually appealing rows that were easier to maintain. They also added the walkways now trod by many visitors to the burying ground. Given the history of Boston and its residents, there are quite a few big names for tourists to seek out. These include revolutionary figures like Samuel Adams, John Hancock, the victims of the 1770 Boston Massacre, and two different markers for Paul Revere. People later on in the 19th century when they decided to place this monument did not find that this slate marker was sufficient. In a bustling metropolis like New York City, it may be easy to assume that the oldest pieces of history are routinely paved over and forgotten. Yet, quite a few of the city's cemeteries date back to the 17th century. For instance, Brooklyn's old Gravesend Cemetery was first mentioned in a 1658 will. Given that the documentation mentions an already standing graveyard, it's possible that the burial grounds were established not long after Gravesend's founding in 1643. The cemetery likely contains the remains of Lady Deborah Moody, the founder of Gravesend and the first woman to establish a settlement in the region. It contains 379 gravestones, many of which are part of an ongoing restoration project, though unfortunately none point toward Moody's last resting place. Moody was a unique figure in early American history. Deemed a religious rebel, Moody was excommunicated from the Puritan church and forced to leave Massachusetts. The well-off Moody settled near New Amsterdam, where she carefully laid out Gravesend, becoming one of the first known city planners of the colonial era. The African burial ground was the final resting place for both enslaved and free black people in New York City. Though it remained active from the 1690s until the mid-1790s, the burial ground was forgotten until it was uncovered again in 1991. That year, construction for an office tower uncovered some of the graves located along Broadway. All told, it's estimated that more than 15,000 people are buried in the earliest known African cemetery in the United States. In 2003, the 419 individuals whose remains were excavated were reinterred in the African Burial Ground Memorial Site. They were placed in hand-carved coffins, each stacked in crypts now covered by a series of seven burial mounds.
The churchyard of San Esteban del Rey near New Mexico's Acoma Pueblo rivals any old Puritan graveyard, as the mission was founded in 1629. Franciscan missionaries established the mission in an attempt to help Spain maintain power over the people of the nearby Acoma Pueblo. The mission represented the wider colonial enterprise that sought to replace indigenous beliefs and ways of life with European ones, including a Catholic system that required burial. The cemetery consists of five levels contained within walls that reach almost 50 feet high. After so many centuries, space is at a premium. The current levels of graves is meant to be the last and is reserved for elders and full-time residents of the Pueblo. And though the cemetery and church represent the colonial effort to destroy indigenous belief, Ackerman culture touches are still visible. These include sculpted faces within the cemetery wall meant to represent guardians, while one section of the wall contains a hole that is said to allow spirits to leave for the afterlife. Often billed as the oldest maintained cemetery in the United States, the Miles Standish Burial Ground in Duxbury, Massachusetts may not strictly be the oldest in the nation, but it's certainly up there. New England Today reports that it was established in 1638 and is host to the mortal remains of many notable passengers on the Mayflower, the English ship that brought colonists to the area in the 17th century. Though some of the earliest markers are no more, the ones that do remain are characteristic of the Puritan outlook on life and death. These include imagery such as death's heads and somewhat less creepy winged angels. Puritans were especially fond of memento mori, or reminders of death's imminence, including skulls, hourglasses, and coffins, as well as inscriptions urging passers-by to consider their own mortality. And yes, military commander Miles Standish is amongst the dead here. Standish died and was buried near Duxbury in 1656. By the 19th century, people wanted to recover his remains from the long-neglected burial ground. The people of Duxbury went on a digging spree and, once they determined that they had probably found Standish, put a memorial on top of his bones in 1893. In 1931, the body was exhumed yet again so it could be placed in a suitably fancy coffin and sealed in a concrete vault, where it remains today. Also known as Old Burying Point, the cemetery in Salem, Massachusetts is one of the oldest European-style burying grounds in the United States. The first mention of Old Burying Point came about in 1637, though the records imply that it was already an established burial place by that time. The oldest known surviving gravestone comes to us from 1673 and belongs to Dorothy Cromwell. Earlier markers were made out of wood and simply didn't survive centuries of New England weather, making it all but impossible to establish exactly when the first person was laid in the earth at this graveyard. None of the victims of the Salem witch trials are there, though. Those who were executed for supposedly practicing witchcraft were sometimes buried in secret by family or else in an unmarked mass grave near the hanging place. You can at least visit the Salem Witch Trials Memorial right next to the cemetery, and now a new memorial has been erected where the condemned were hanged. Today, Cahokia is best known as a state historic site in Collinsville, Illinois, but centuries ago, it was nothing less than one of the largest cities in North America. The name Cahokia is actually a 19th century designation for the place, given that we don't know what the original inhabitants called their sprawling complex settlement. The city was at its height from 600 to 1350 CE, with more than 15,000 people living in its surrounding areas at the peak of its population. Cahokia boasted a complex layout with residential neighborhoods, sports fields, marketplaces, and agriculture cultural sector, and a series of mounds. Those last structures were apparently used for religious ceremonies and definitely contained burials. Of those burial mounds, the largest and most complex one is today called Mound 72. Archaeologists working since 1967 have uncovered the remains of 270 people within this one mound. Some of the entombed rest in mass graves, with at least one group burial showing signs of violence. These unfortunates were laid to rest right before the site was effectively abandoned in the first half of the 14th century, hinting at a bloody regional conflict. Other burials show that the dead were buried with rich grave goods and upon platforms of cedar. These high-status burials included women as well as men, indicating that the people of Cahokia may have held relatively egalitarian views on gender. And the mound excavations have disproven many wild, unfounded theories about who actually built Cahokia. They do appear to be, and there's no evidence to suggest that they're not, purely indigenous. The people who were living here at the time constructed them. With a name like Grave Creek Mound, it may not be surprising to learn that this indigenous burial mound in West Virginia does in fact contain human burials. What is shocking is the age of this burial ground. It dates back to between 250 and 150 BCE, and the sheer amount of effort it took to construct it. The Adena people would have had to move more than 57,000 tons of soil to raise Grave Creek Mound. The main mound was also surrounded by similar smaller structures, but agriculture and looters destroyed many of these. There is evidence that Grave Creek Mound was the site of prestigious burials. 
Some of the dead there were buried with valuable grave goods, including metal jewelry, smoking pipes, and tools made from flint. Grave Creek Mound was also multi-use in that it contains multiple layers of burials. Some of the burials uncovered in 1838 by local landowners included thousands of shell or ivory beads, valuable seashells, and copper bracelets. However, the efforts of these 19th century amateur archaeologists almost certainly destroyed evidence that would have revealed more about the life of the Adena Mound Builders. One of the oldest cemeteries in the U.S. is in what is now the state of Texas. The burial ground known to modern researchers as the Ernest Whitty site, or the Allen's Creek Ossuary, was first used around 2700 BCE. It was used for the next 4,000 years, with the last burials taking place around 1500 CE. It's named after young Ernest Whitty, who found ancient human remains while digging with his brother near the Brazos River in the 1930s, but didn't alert authorities until 1974. An estimated 238 people were buried at the Ernest Whitty site, with about 61 individuals in the oldest area of the excavation. Some were buried with grave goods, including bone tools. More recent burials uncovered a wider array of objects, such as stone and shell jewelry, animal skulls, and stone knives. Some also appeared to have died violent deaths, perhaps because of territorial struggles in the area. 